In this lesson, we're going to work on proving trigonometric identity. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to prove them using the primary trig identities and also prove them without using the primary trig identities. So what is a trigonometric identity? Well, it's an equation that involves trigonometry that's true for all values of the variable, which means it's some equation whose left side is equal to its right side, and we're going to prove that the left side is equal to its right side. So we're going to learn all sorts of strategies to help us prove trigonometric identities. But first, we've got to start off with the basics, which are the primary identities. So the primary identities we can derive from just taking a look at a point on the coordinate plane. And if we write out that point and we draw a right angle triangle to denote the x length and the length of y, we'll be left with a right angle triangle, whereas hypotenuse we can think of as r, as in the radius of a circle. So if we were able to come up with an expression to represent sine of theta, so we know that sine of any angle is equal to its opposite side over its hypotenuse. So therefore, sine of any angle is going to equal its y-coordinate over its radius. We know that cos of any angle is going to equal adjacent over hypotenuse. And so we know the adjacent side is x and its hypotenuse is r. So we know that cos theta is equal to x over r. And finally, tan theta. We know tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, which is going to be y over x. So here we've derived our first three trigonometric identities, and they're called the primary trig identities. So we have sine theta is equal to y over r. We have cos theta is equal to x over r, and tan theta is equal to y over x. So now that we've derived these, we know that these are true, which means that they're completely equivalent. So we can use these to help us prove other trigonometric identities. So we've proven this before, but let's prove this again using trigonometric identities. So we're going to prove that tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta. So we've been using this in the past. Maybe we proved in a different way, but we're going to prove it using these identities here. So one way to prove identities is to break it up into its left side and its right side. So on our left side we have tan of theta and the right side of the equation is equal to sine theta over cos theta. So now that we've separated the two sides of the equation, if I can prove that this guy simplifies to the same thing that this guy does, we are going to prove that our left side is equal to our right side and therefore this equation or this identity is true. So we're going to try to simplify each side as much as possible. So I can use the primary identities to simplify this because I know tan theta is the same as y over x. So I can rewrite this as y over x. And there's nothing really for me to do left with this. So let's go ahead, ahead to the right side and work on this guy. I know that sine theta, that's just equal to y over r. So I'm going to change sine theta into y over r. And I know that cos theta is just x over r, so I'm going to replace it with x over r. So my right side is going to equal y over r times the reciprocal of x over r, which is r over x. What's going to happen is our r's are going to cancel out, and we are left with our right side is equal to y over x. If we take a look, our left side is equal to y over x. Our right side simplifies to y over, y over x, which implies that the left side is equal to the right side, and this identity is true. So therefore, in a quick conclusion, therefore, our left side is equal to our right side, and we've proven this identity using, using the primary trigonometric identities. So now we're asked to prove a new identity called the Pythagorean identity. Here it is. So we're asked to prove it using the primary identities. So let's start off by first breaking it up into its left side and into its right side. So we have on our left side sine squared theta plus cos squared theta, and our right side is supposed to be equal to 1. So there's nothing for us to really simplify on the right side, so we're going to leave this guy alone, and let's take a look at this left side. Well, we know that sine squared theta, that just means sine of theta all squared. And cos squared theta, that just means cos of theta all squared. So if I were to use the uh, primary identities to simplify this, I could change um, sine theta to y over r all squared. And then I could change cos theta to x over r all squared. 
And if I continue to simplify this, I know this is going to be y squared over r squared plus x squared over r squared. And continue to simplify it, we've got y squared plus x squared all over r squared. So that's what our left side equals. Somehow, this is supposed to be equal to 1. Well, So there must be another substitution that we have to make. So if you take a look at this, this is x squared plus y squared. We know from our previous picture that if we've got our triangle that looks something like this, and here's our, oops, okay, this is better. So if this is our angle here, we've got our x here, and this is our y here, and here's our r. We know that the Pythagorean theorem shows that x squared plus y squared has to equal r squared, which means that this guy here is just equal to r squared, so we can make the substitution. So we've got our left side is equal to r squared over r squared, and we've got to just write a little note of why we can do that. Well, we know that this is true since r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, and that's why I can make that jump. So therefore, my left side is going to equal 1, because r squared divided by r squared is 1. If you take a look at our right side, it's also equal to 1. So we've simplified both sides. We've shown that they are equal to each other, so we can just finish with our conclusion. Therefore, our left side is equal to our right side. Now that we've got a good grasp on the primary identities, let's take a look at some more simple, useful identities, and they're called the Pythagorean identities. So we proved this one actually above. We proved that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1. We proved them using the primary identities, but why does it work? Well, in the unit circle, we know that if we were to make the radius of each of our triangles a unit, 1. It means that our coordinates for our x and y, our x coordinates would be cos and our y coordinates would be sine. Which means that if we have a radius of 1, this is what our triangle lengths would look like. We would have cos theta here and sine theta here. So now if we take a look at the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. We know that it would also be true that our x length squared plus our y length squared would equal our radius squared. So if we continue with that, we know that our x is just cos and our y is just sine. So we can simplify that to y squared, which is sine squared, plus x squared, which is cos squared, has to equal our radius squared. And our radius, or hypotenuse, is 1, and 1 squared is 1. So therefore, because of the Pythagorean theorem, this also has to be true. Sine squared theta plus cos squared theta has to equal 1. So this is the most common Pythagorean identity, but we can come up with other ones from it. So we can come come up with and derive two other identities just by dividing this Pythagorean identity by sine squared theta and by cos squared theta. So let's first start by dividing the first guy by sine squared theta. If we divide this guy by sine squared theta and this guy by sine squared theta and this guy by sine squared theta. So we're essentially dividing the entire equation by sine squared theta. So what would be left with 1 by 1 is sine squared theta divided by sine squared theta would be 1 plus cos squared theta divided by sine squared theta. That's just cotan. That's just the reciprocal of tan. And we have 1 over sine squared theta. That's just going to be cosecant squared theta. That's just the reciprocal of sine. So this is a new identity that also has to be true. Now let's take the um, Pythagorean identity we found and divide it by cos squared theta and see what we come up with. So we have cos squared theta divided by cos squared theta and dividing by cos squared theta. Sine squared theta divided by cos squared theta, that's just going to be tan squared theta. Plus cos squared divided by cos squared is just going to be 1 is equal to 1 over cos squared theta, that's going to be secant squared theta. And so we have our second or our third Pythagorean identity. So here they are represented below. So we have our original Pythagorean identity. We're going to use this most often. Sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1. And then we have our secant squared theta. We've derived that over here. And our cosecant squared theta, which we've derived over here. So these so these are three Pythagorean identities that we can also use when we're simplifying trigonometric identities. So now we're going to practice proving identities without using the primary identities. 
So instead, we're going to use our knowledge of reciprocal identities. We'll use our property that we know tan is equal to sine over cos, and we'll use the Pythagorean identities that we derived. On the right here, we have some strategies that could work for you. So one strategy is to change everything in terms of sine and cos. Another strategy is to make sure that you've tried the Pythagorean identities if they apply. Also, don't forget to combine any fractions. So if you realize you've, that you've got two fractions and that you need to add, subtract, multiply, or divide them, go ahead to do that. Also, you can also try factoring as well as multiplying by the conjugate. So when you get stuck, just take a look back at this checklist and see if there's anything that you haven't tried yet. So here's our first example. We've got to prove that cos x times tan x all divided by sine x is equal to 1. So let's break this up into our left side and our right side. So the first side I'm going to start with is our left side, which is cos x tan x all over sine x. And I know that my right side is supposed to equal 1. So there's nothing to simplify on the right side, so I'm going to leave that guy alone. On the left side, we've got cos x sine x. We can't do anything with that. But if I use the first strategy we just spoke about, about changing everything in terms of sine and cos, sometimes it's easier to simplify this way. So one thing we can do is change this tan x into sine over cos. So we have our left side is equal to cos x times sine x over cos x all over sine x. And we can do this because tan is the same thing. So tan x is the same thing as sine x over cos x. So let's continue to simplify. So on the left side, we're going to have, we've got a fraction, we've got two fractions being multiplied in this numerator. So we have cos x over 1 times sine x over cos. That's going to work out to cos x times sine x all over cos x all over sine x. We know that these cos x's are going to cross out. Times cos x divided by cos x is just going to be 1. So we have left side is equal to sine x in the numerator and then just sine x in the denominator, which we know is going to simplify to 1, which is the exact same as our right side. So therefore, we can draw the conclusion that left side is equal to right side, and we've proven this identity to be true. In our next example, we are to prove that cos x is equal to 1 over cos x minus sine x times tan x. So I'm going to start with the right side this time because the left side, well, we'll just write out the left side. The left side, you can't really simplify any further. So we have the left side is equal to cos x. So let's work on the right side now. The right side is equal to 1 over cos of x minus sine x times tan x. So you could try a couple different things here. One, some of you might be able to see that this 10x, maybe we could convert it to sine over cos. That would put everything in terms of sine over cos. Also note that in the solution that, or in the simplification we should get, which is cos x, there is no tan x or sine. So somehow this has got to cancel out. You could also see this as two fractions. This has a denominator of cos x and this has a denominator of 1 and you can make like denominators. So we will do that, but let's first change that tan x into sine x over cos x. And remember, there's lots of different ways to solve these. You don't have to do it the same way that I have. So we're going to change tan x into sine x over cos x, and that's because we know this property. And this, this is true because tan x is equal to sine x over cos x. Okay, so let's keep on going. So we have our right side is equal to 1 over cos x, minus, we have sine squared x all over cos x. So now we've got two fractions subtracting. We have the same denominator, which means that we can simplify the numerator. So in the numerator, we have right side is equal to 1 minus sine squared x all over cos x. So now it doesn't look like we can do anything else, but we know that the, this side has to simplify to cos x somehow which means that this numerator has to simplify. So if you take a look at our Pythagorean identities, we don't have anything that says what 1 minus sine x squared is. But if we start with the Pythagorean identity, sine x squared plus cos x squared is equal to 1, why don't we isolate so that 1 and sine x are on the same side, just like this. So let's bring this sine x over onto the other side. And so what we're going to be left with is cos squared x is equal to 1 minus sine squared x. 
So now we can recognize this. 1 minus sine squared x is the same thing as cos squared x, and that's what we have right here. We have 1 minus sine squared x. So because this is true, then we can do a quick substitution. Our right side has to equal to 1 minus sine squared x has to equal cos squared x all over cos x. So that's two cos x's multiplied together, divided by a cos x, which means that we're just going to be left with cos x. So we can make this substitution since this is true. So our right side we've simplified to cos x. Our left side is already simplified to cos x. Therefore, we can conclude that left side is equal to right side, and we've proven this identity for all values of x. Let's keep going with the harder example now. So taking a look, we've got sine squared x over 1 minus cos x on the left side, and on the right side we have 1 plus cos x. So now we've got to think about our strategies. One strategy is to change everything in terms of sine and cos. Well, everything is in terms of sine and cos. Our next strategy is to check if we can use the Pythagorean identities. So I don't see anything that says sine squared x plus cos squared x, but I do see a sine squared x. So can we manipulate the Pythagorean identity to do a quick substitution? So let's start off with the left side. So we've got sine squared x all over 1 minus cos x. So if I start with the Pythagorean identity, sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1, and isolate for sine squared x, I'll be left with sine squared x is equal to 1 minus cos squared x. And so therefore I can do this substitution. So our left side is equivalent to sine squared x, which is 1 minus cos squared x, all over 1 minus cos x. So can I cancel these ones out? Absolutely not, because it's not factored. This is an adding one, and this is an adding one in the numerator. We can't divide those because it's not factored. So can we factor this? Well, if you can't see if you can factor this or not, my suggestion is to do a quick substitution. So the quick substitution is to let A represent cos x. And then C, after we do the substitution, if you can see if we can factor now. So we have our left side is equal to 1 minus. If cos x is A, then cos squared x must be A squared. All over, we've got 1 minus, instead of cos x, we're going to write A. So in the denominator, we can't factor this at all. But taking a look at the numerator, we have a difference of squares. So 1 minus A squared is just 1 plus A, 1 minus A. All over, we have 1 minus a. So now we have the numerator factored and the denominator factored, and one factor they have in common is 1 minus a. So 1 minus a divided by 1 minus a is just going to be 1. So we have our left side is equal to, let's write this in black, our left side is equal to 1 plus a. If we do our substitution back, then we know that our left side is equal to 1 plus a is just cos x. So now let's take a look at our right side of the equation. So here's our left side. Our right side of the equation is 1 plus cos x, which means that we have finished our proving our trigonometric identity because our right side is cos x. Our left side is, one, sorry, our right side is 1 plus cos x. Our left side is 1 plus cos x. Therefore, our left side is equal to our right side.